um, Adam just talked about, uh, it's not about us, it's about them. I brought some them. Uh, and, and I'm going to take a page from Cynthia Lawson earlier today. There's no possible way that I can keep up with that. Um, Adam was unbelievable. And, and so I'm going to just slow it down a little bit <laughs> because that's the only way to go from that. Um, we have one slide. That's it. You've got the whole thing. And um, I am just, I'm thrilled to be here. My name again is Shelley Krause. I come to you today from Rutgers Preparatory School in Somerset, New Jersey, um, right on the banks of the Raritan River. And um, my work there is as a, an academic matchmaker or a tribe finder. Most people call it college counseling. <laughs> I think language is important. And we each, all three of us have a, a quick story to tell and it is our goal to have more of you talk in this session than in any other session in the two days. So we are going to be short, sweet, and to the point because I know some of the people in this audience and there are some really great people in this audience. And I'm pretty sure that the people that I don't know are also great people and we want to hear what you have to say. When we proposed the topic of this session, I, have, I do have to say that the word default had a whole nother set of connotations than it does today on August 2nd. Um, <laughs> So let me just be very clear. This is the kind of default I'm talking about. And, and you'll see that the title is ringtone. So just a quick show of hands. Who here in the audience has a cell phone? OK, that's just to make sure you're awake. And of those folks, who has a cell phone that still rings the way it did the first day it came to you from the manufacturer? Oh, got some honest folks as well. That's great. That's the kind of default setting I'm talking about. And in fact, if you were hoping for a tutorial about how to get a new ringtone, that's not what this is about. A <laughs> Little bit more conceptual. Uh, I'm so grateful to Chris and to Jeff for opening up this space in which to think about ourselves as learners, our students as learners, and our journeys as learners. And what I want to focus on today, and I want all you all to help us with this and to start thinking right now about your stories around this is how we change as learners, how we switch those default settings. So here's my quick story. It's also, like Michelle's, a wiki story. Um, a couple of years, right around the time that Twitter was starting out actually, I was a member of a listserv, about 500 college counselors all over the country who contribute regularly to helping each other find schools for students that they're working with. And a colleague of mine had gotten into the practice annually of collating a huge list of these counselor curated lists of schools. It fell into all kinds of unusual categories. And inevitably, every year when he shared this out to everyone, everyone was super grateful. It was a fantastic service. And then the addendum started coming in. Oh, you forgot this school. I can't believe you put this school on that list. Why isn't there a list for such and such? So he'd post the list, and for the next two weeks, all the traffic on the list would be about how the things were wrong. And at some point, I thought, well, somebody's going to make a wiki out of this because that's what it really needs to be. It needs to be something that we can all collectively fix as we go. And nobody did it. And I thought, it must be really hard to make a wiki. And nobody did it. And I thought, why isn't somebody doing this? And so you know the end of the story, right? I made the wiki. <laughs> and it, um, it turned into this giant magnet. I started getting emails from people I'd never met saying, Hey, this is a fantastic research, a resource. Do you also know that there's a list of schools that fill this category? So we have something like 250 lists of schools that would be hard to find using other more traditional tools because they represent little tiny niches, like schools that have an observatory on their campus or colleges that have uh, a kosher kitchen, things that are hard to find. Um, but it's not really about the tool. I love the wiki. I'm very excited about it. I'm, I'm pleased to have created a space that encourages collaboration and to have these opportunities to connect with people. But for me, the thing that's worth talking about is what happened in my head. I went from thinking of that information, useful information to me and other people, um, naturally residing on my hard drive, because that's where I put stuff, to thinking this information should be in the world, should be out there for everybody. And that's 
a shift in my default setting. It's changed a lot of things. It's changed the work that I do with students. And I'm happy to talk more about that, but as I said, we're trying to leave as much space for you all as possible, and I know, because I've been at conferences, that you really want to hear from them. So, um, these are Nikki Kakarla and Mike Federachko. Nikki is a recent graduate of Rutgers Prep. Mike is an about-to-be graduate of Rutgers Prep. They each have a story to share about their changes in default settings in, as learners, and then we're going to open it up for questions, and we, we need you to have questions, so thank you. So think of them, please. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm a recent graduate of, of high school, and I'm going to be attending Barnard College here in New York City in the <laughs> fall, um, thanks to her help. Um, so uh, the way I changed my default settings was by keeping an open mind. For most of high school, I uh, only thought within the boundaries of my 350 student school and never really beyond that. Um, the, during high school, I d developed an interest in uh, microfinance, and when I, when I thought about what I wanted to do about it, I was like, how about I promote this within my school? Um, in my senior year, I uh, started an independent study where I studied microfinance and other innovative ways to help a uh, developing world. And my main project was presenting at the 2010 Global Education Conference, which was an online conference. And um, what, I, what I talked about was how you get involved with microfinance and the effects of it. What I learned from that, um, apart from like public speaking, uh, was that I was able to reach more than 50 people from eight different countries during the 10 minutes alone that I was on, uh, on speaking. And that isn't even including the people that, were, that watched later on. And to me, it like blew my mind because for those 10 minutes, after those 10 minutes, people wanted to hear what I said and wanted to know what I thought. And in high school, I never thought I would meet so many people that were interested in me. And what I learned was that when students uh, you know, start thinking outside of the box and start uh, freeing themselves from restrictive boundaries, the possibilities of what they can accomplish is really endless. Um, and so that's how I learned to change my default settings. I'll pass it on to Mike now. Okay, so first thing I want to say is I'm surprised that there are so few students at this conference. Mm -hmm. And it's a little, it, honestly, it's a little disappointing. You can clap, it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I think students are a really important part of this whole conversation and to leave them out is you really do everybody a disservice. But I do a lot of work outside of school. I'm the chief technology officer at the Independent Center, which is a nonpartisan public policy and political consulting group based in New Jersey. I've also started two businesses. I, I've almost lost track. It's not good. Um, and, you know, I, it's kind of sad because I do pretty much all of my learning outside the classroom. And there's, even, even going to Rutgers Prep where there's a lot of, you know, it's a very liberal school, the, the ability to uh, showcase my work outside of school, to get credit, just doesn't exist. And I think that's something we need to work on, you know, and allow, allowing students that, that opportunity to, to do something that they really have a passion for. Um, the Independent Center, you know, taking a step back, how, how many people here uh, are, believe that citizen involvement in government is, is key? Right, exactly. So uh, that's, that, it should be all of you. Um, and th does anybody have a guess what the voter turnout rate was in the 2010 interim election? A little higher than 20. Yeah, it was 40% of eligible voters. So that's, uh, that's a minority. Um, right, so it goes up as we get older. Um, what the Independent Center is doing is taking municipal budgets, which by the way, in New Jersey we have a huge property tax problem because that's where education is funded out of is property taxes. And, you know, we, we pay about 55 to 60% in property taxes, 20% in income, and 20% in corporate sales tax. So there's, it's out of whack, 
right? There's, we rely much more heavily on the property tax than we do on any other tax. So of course, when people want, you know, lower taxes, the first thing they do is cut property taxes, which hits education right in the face. It's the first, you know, education is, in, is majorly funded by property taxes. So we've put all this budget information online that was not previously available in any usable format so that citizens could educate themselves, use the information to their advantage to ask hard questions and to, you know, get involved. And so we're, we're moving that forward. We're also moving forward with a plan to rebalance the tax system in New Jersey, make it more affordable. It'll work wonders for the housing market. Um, you know, when people pay more in property taxes than they do on their mortgage payment, that's not good. Um, so we, we are using the internet to not only educate citizens, you know, we're, we're, we've, we've got to start thinking beyond the classroom and, and we're doing that. Terrific, thanks. So, questions about our journeys, or I, I would love to hear if, if this has sparked something in, in your experience, if you're thinking, yeah, I, I made a shift. I, we would also love to hear from you about how you got from where you were to where you are now. I'd We've like got to see a lot more focus on allowing students to experiment with their with their interests and doing work outside of class and supporting that versus, you know, there were a lot of times where I felt like I was being punished because I was focusing on the work outside of school, you know, and people really just didn't see the value in it. And they thought, you know, oh, this kid is just totally, you know, making the, making the wrong choices and spending way too much time on his work when in reality I was learning so much more than I ever was in the classroom. That's great. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate it. We would love the opportunity to continue to connect with you. So that's our stuff up so there. Thank get you. Get in touch. Thank you.